Hello to all of you. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta and today we are going to talk about static and dynamic forecasting in eViews. Any economic variable follows a random process and has its own distribution, probability distribution concept. We call this distribution, which is known as data generation process. Basically, the data generation process is a probability density function whose mean is mu and the variance is sigma square. Now, in this process, we want to predict that what will be the future values of this economic variable. So, there should be some measure which can compare that how accurate our prediction is with the real data or how far our predicted data matches with the real data. For this, we will be using Thal's U statistics. It is a relative accuracy measure that compares the forecasted results with the results of the forecasting with the minimal historical data. It also squares the deviation to give more weight to large errors and to exaggerate errors which can help to eliminate methods with large errors. How to interpret Thal's U statistics? If the value of the Thal's U statistics is less than 1, your forecasting technique is better than the guesswork. If it is equal to 1, the forecasting technique is as good as guesswork. If it is more than 1, the forecasting technique is worse than the guesswork. The interpretation of the Thal's U statistics is, in Thal's U statistics, we are having U1 and U2. So for U1, how to interpret? The more the accurate, the more accurate the forecast, the lower the value of the U1 statistics. The U1 statistics is bounded between 0 and 1 with the value closer to 0 indicating the greater forecasting accuracy. The U2 statistics will take the value 1 under the new forecasting method Values less than 1 indicating the greater forecasting accuracy than the new forecasting method. Values greater than 1 indicate the opposite of it. What is the difference between static and dynamic forecasting? The basic difference between static and dynamic forecasting is that in case of static forecasting, the dependent variable does not become independent variable. You can see here that in case of static forecasting, y the dependent variable c is a constant x and z are independent variable when we take the legs of y y minus 1 and y2 minus 2 it becomes a dynamic forecasting now how to carry out the static and dynamic forecasting let's see in eviews for this you will have to go in the data file you will have to run the equation by quick estimate equation y c x z and you will get the estimate. This is the estimate for the entire sample. I want to carry out on the sub subsample. So we can do this by going and estimate again and now choosing the period from 1980 to 1990. And now I will click on forecast button. So this can be done from here forecast. A new variable will be created, forecast name yf. Please ensure to remove this tick and click OK. You got the results. Now this forecast is for the time period 1980 to 2000. You will have to change this time period and you will have to make it 1991 to 1994. Remove the stick, click OK. You can see that the blue line is between the two red dotted line. The first thing which you have to see here is this one, root mean squared error. So here it is 2.486. This means that the difference between the actual observation and the forecast is 2.486. The next thing which you have to see here is the Thal statistic. So if Thal is nearer to zero, it means that the forecast Y fits the data, actual data very well. Here it is nearer to zero. It means that the forecasting is better than the guesswork. The next thing which you have to see is the bias proportion, which is 0.68. It is 68% which means that the gap between the actual mean y and the forecast mean y is 68%. It is also known as systematic error. The next thing which you have to compute is the residue. 
So for that, you will go in residuals and when you will click it, you will get three lines. Residual, actual and fitted. The line of actual, which is in red color and fitted, which is in green color, is very close to each other. Moreover, the line of residual is in the range from 1991 to 94 is almost nearer to zero. Okay. The next thing which you have to do is select Y, the original series and the forecasted series open as group. And you can see for the time period 91 to 94, there is a forecasting which has been done. So you will go in view, graph and click OK. You can see here the forecasting which has been done for this time period. You can also scroll from here to get the zoom view. Now how to carry out the dynamic forecasting? For that, I'll go in quick estimate. And this time I'll write Y, C, x y minus one so when i include the lag of the dependent variable and make it as an independent variable i'll have to change the time frame from here i'll have to make it 1990 enter and you got the equation i'll again go in forecast this time i'll make it yf1 because yf series was for the static forecasting Make sure to remove the ticks from here. Make this as 1991 to 1994. And again, click OK. And you got the answer. Again, you can see the blue line is between the red two dotted line, which is quite de desirable. Now, if you see here, root mean squared error is 6.84. This error has increased compared to the static forecasting. Moreover, Thal's inequality coefficient, inequality coefficient, which was 0.12 in the earlier model, has now increased to 0.38. Moreover, the bias proportion has also increased. Now it is 0.83. It means that 80 per 83 percent bias is there in our model. So this means that the static model was much better than the dynamic model. We can go here and compute the residuals also. For more videos on econometrics, you can subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter and you can please like my videos.